Hey everybody, Thesha here with Legacy of Flight in conjunction with One Love Wellness Center here in Menasha, Wisconsin, coming to you for one of my 365 days from my heart to yours. And we're reading from, if the Buddha dated, a handbook for finding love on the spiritual path and doing um, chapter 19, Resolve Unfinished Business with family, friends, and past lovers or spouses, which makes a lot of sense if you wanna give your your all to this new relationship or you know be able to date because you can't move forward if we're always clinging to the past. And that's, you know, a real lesson that's coming to, you know, to play for me for in, in this past year is that, you know, I was trying to create my future from my past and it obviously was not working out too grand. <laughs> but beyond ideas, there's a field. Will you meet me there? And that's from Rumi. To meet each other in a field beyond ideas, the place of peace and love. It helps to be free from resentment and hurt from the past. From, for some, it's a big task. But as we feel the lightness that comes from clearing the air with others, we gain the courage to continue. Clearing out old hurts and resolving conflicts is both an internal and external process. Sometimes an old relationship still bothers us because we continue telling ourselves stories about how it reflects on us. We were a jerk, stupid, or deluded. In this case, we need to question our faulty assumptions. There may be no need to speak to the other person. Other times, if the person is currently in our life or we believe a conversation would be helpful, we might decide to talk with him or her. In either case, it's important to be aware that unresolved losses and conflict live in us as a form of energy. You may suddenly feel a knot in your gut, a dull ache in your chest, a tightness in your throat when you remember the lover who left without saying goodbye, the time you screamed at your partner and walked out the door, or the death of your former spouse, the argument with your brother to whom which you no longer speak. If you notice your body sensations when you think of unfinished business, it will help you to realize the cost of carrying this pain around. To become aware of unfinished business in your life, ask yourself the following five questions. Who comes to mind when I think of unresolved grief, hurt, or pain? To whom do I need to apologize? And within that question, I feel like you can sometimes energetically apologize, energetically, you know, cut ties and and forgive each other in in the whole situation for for your part and the other person's part. If you feel like you need to take the extra step and actually speak to this person, that is okay as well. But if you feel you don't need to and you can and resolve it without speaking to them, that is okay as well. It's what works the best for you on your path here. That's always the important part. There's no like cookie cutter, one way, one size fits all for healing. It's what resonates with you. What is your heart telling you? So the third one is with whom do I need to talk over a conflict and seek some form of resolution? To whom do I need to send thanks? And what are the conclusions I've made about myself that relate to these situations? The situations that you are still holding on to. Your list may be short. It may also change as you begin this process. You clear the air with one person and another situation seems to resolve itself in your mind. Or you suddenly think of something else that you need to address. Excuse me. If you are serious about this spiritually bonded relationship, take the list and start working through it. 
While we can sometimes put unresolved conflicts on the shelf, they have a way of falling off and clunking us on the head unexpectedly. We thought we were free from hurt, but when the friend mentions a former lover, we feel a sudden sadness or a sharp burning sensation in our chest. The ability to apologize is crucial to all relationships. Apologies rebuild the bridge that gets severed when we hurt someone else, either intentionally or by accident. Apologies don't require us to grovel or wallow in guilt. We simply acknowledge that our actions were insensitive, unkind, or harmful and say we are sorry. Even if the unresolved situation goes back 30 years, it can be a tremendous relief to make amends. And also within making amends, this is your part, okay? Most of the time when you come to somebody with an apology, they will accept it. In the case that they don't, you have done their, your part and that is something that they need to work on and not you. And, and there is absolutely nothing that you can do for them to help them. That is their situation that they need to deal with. There's something, you know, obviously more than just whatever happened between you two that they need to deal with. But as long as you do your part and you offer up this forgiveness, then you can let that go and and there's no more of this attachment for you. So settling old conflicts. First, make a list of people with whom you have unresolved conflicts in your life. Start with the one that seems the most possible to handle. If the conflict dates back a long time, a letter may come as less of a shock than a phone call and give the other person a chance to consider your words and not be caught off guard. It also lets you express yourself with more thought, but listen to your instincts. The letter or request can be remarkably simple. I've been thinking about you lately and feeling a heartfelt desire to meet and talk in hope of clearing the air. I have no agenda for the future, but perhaps by talking we can lay to rest old conflicts and at least feel peaceful when we think of each other with all best wishes. If you don't hear from the person in a couple weeks, you can follow up with a phone call and ask to meet. If the person refuses, you might ask what they would be willing to do. Talk on the phone, think about it longer. If the person absolutely won't get together with you, you might write a second letter containing everything you need to say to feel complete. Be direct, don't attack, and try to summarize how you feel without making it terribly long. Imagine how you would feel receiving such a letter. So include what you appreciated about the person, like their sense of humor, the way they supported you in crises. Number two, what troubled you or felt hurtful about the relationship? And be specific. And then what you've learned from the person and the relationship. And number four, anything else that comes to mind, perhaps just filling that in on what you've been doing since your last contact. And five, your willingness or unwillingness to keep the door open. So be truthful to you and your heart. You might be surprised as to how effective writing a letter can be. Once I wrote to Marlene, a woman in my Quaker meeting who had suddenly turned cold towards me. I believe that her change in behavior came about because she disapproved of the way I was treating my daughter at a difficult time in my life. In my letter, I briefly explained my concern and asked her to talk with me. Her reply was terse. She sent back my card saying only that she didn't have time, she was too busy. But to my surprise, the next time she saw me, she smiled and gave me a big hug. Apparently the fact that I had brought the problem out into the open had eased her negative feelings towards me. And just like that, the issue was resolved. Marlene and I have been friendly towards each other ever since. Likewise, if anyone asks you to clear out the air, 
do so unless there is a risk of harming yourself. On the spiritual path, we commit into being an instrument of healing and bringing separation or oh, bridging separation. If talking with someone is not safe because they have been violent or abusive, ask for a meeting in the presence of another person or just write a letter. Again, with all of these relationships that are abusive, it is not telling you to, to put yourself back into the fire to resolve this. And that is definitely, you know, a situation where you can clear the air energetically. You don't have to actually go to that person. You can write the letters and I would suggest writing the letter if it's in an abusive situation or if you just want to do it energetically. Write the letter and burn the letter. So you're not going back to reread the letter. You're letting it go you are releasing it to the universe. You are releasing your attachments to the situation, to whatever occurred in that situation, and you're letting it go. So grieving. Grieving is completed when we can remember a person peacefully, appreciating what we've learned from him or her. We no longer feel the gut-wrenching emptiness when we walk into the place where we live together or feel intense sorrow when we wake up and remember they are gone. We need to listen to our inner voice so we don't either rush the process of finding a new person or deny ourselves the freedom to move on. Traditionally, people are urged to wait a year before seeking a new partner, to experience the empty house, the holiday without her, the birthday without him. Likewise, if you meet someone who is still deeply mourning in a loss, you might be wise to step aside and not become involved other than as a friend. A person who is immersed in grief simply cannot enter the flow of give and take with another person until his or her heart is healed. These can be useful guidelines, but they only that. Guidelines. Your internal wisdom is your true guide. As always, we know what's best for us on our path. So then there's gratitude. Unfinished business also includes expressing our love and gratitude towards others. So many Dear Anne and Dear Abby letters express regret at not saying I love you before someone died. When we thank people who have touched us in some special way, it's like closing the circle. Someone gave to us, now we give back. Resolving old hurts and expressing our gratitude allows the energy to flow freely and releases tension in our bodies. I mean this literally. So there's a process that I do, which is um, an intuitive writing process, and you just go through the chakras. But within that, recently, I also did something similar with, you know, the energetic releasing to to these old relationships and I forgave myself and the other person and saw the value of that relationship. So I was giving them gratitude. I was grateful for that relationship. I saw the value of what that relationship actually gave to me. Even though it ended and you know, we have moved on, but it gave a release for, for that other person and, and for myself, like to forgive myself for whatever occurred in the relationship that I did and to forgive the other person for their part. So it was like two people, you know, we each played a part in, you know, the relationship not working and just being grateful for all the things that I learned throughout all of those relationships. So she says, this winter after I faced some deeply etched fears and dealt with an unpleasant situation that had me emotionally paralyzed, I went cross country skiing with a friend. And for the first time, I could keep up with her without getting winded. I kept asking, Jerry, are you going slowly to be nice? And she said, no. 
you're going much faster. Releasing fear had actually improved my wind capacity. As you begin the process of clearing out unfinished business, be gentle with yourself. In Buddhism, there is no concept of sin. All harmful acts are seen as stemming from unconsciousness and dick disconnection from our essence. So remember, we are all trying to wake up. When pain exists between two people, it means we're holding on to our illusion of separateness. And we can't see through the shell of our person, personalities to the essence of each other. So again, when pain exists between two people, it means we're holding on to our illusions of separateness. And we can't see through the shell of our personalities to the essence of each other. Once we can diffuse the smoke screen, love often returns, or at least we feel peace, even if we part forever. So in all of these processes, go within and trust your heart and, you know, Trust your heart if you feel you can do these releasings or resolve this unfinished conflict or business with this person energetically. Because that in itself is huge. And it's, it has the same effect on you as if you actually, you know, are talking to this person. So again, you know... Go with your heart and what you feel is the best route for you and trust that. And, you know, as I've stated in other videos, like intention sets the direction for everything within our lives. So if it is our intention to, you know, energetically clear this, then that's what's going to happen because that is your intention. And the universe, your guides, everything is constantly conspiring to assist you to be your greatest for the highest good of all. So when our intention is to become that or to remember that really is what it is, is just to remember our greatness to remember our magnificence then we head in that direction and we can resolve these and then we can be our best as we are I can be my best Thacia for the new relationship because I have let go of my attachments I have resolved these conflicts with you know, all of these other relationships, you know, it's not just past lovers, it's family, it's friends, it's people, you know, maybe it's somebody you don't even talk to anymore. And there was just one interaction that this like keeps coming back to you. Then just resolve that. And you can do that again, as I said, energetically. So, and just, as always, remember that you are eternally adored and loved for just being you.